All right, so we are real quickly going to kind of go through your first set of notes uh, for intro to the animal kingdom. And what I'm going to do is have you pause the video throughout uh, this particular segment so that you can copy stuff down because I'm not going to post just the link to the PowerPoint presentation because I want you to hear the lecture that goes along with it. Um, so pause the video throughout so that you can copy down your notes um, and so that you can also copy down anything else in your notebook that needs to be done. All right, so when we're talking about animals, uh, we're going to go through a few different vocabulary terms um, that go along with this particular unit. And then we're going to kind of start talking about, you know, our, our uh, components of symmetry um, that all relate to our animals. All right, so the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and pause the video now. Um, copy this chart down on page 47 in your notebook. It can take up the entire page in your notebook. And what I'm going to do is have you still follow the table of contents so that we have everything aligned within that notebook and it can be easily checked for completion of work. All right, so on page 48, so flip to the next page, it should be uh, the back side of that marine invertebrates chart. Um, we are going to go ahead and start taking our notes. Please use shorthand, please write, paraphrase these particular sets of notes since I haven't made you a printed copy of this particular set. Um, so without further ado, let's begin our intro to animals. All right, so what exactly makes an animal different from a plant? Well, three different things. So most of them sexually reproduce. Now, there are a few animals that go through asexual reproduction. We talked about starfish and their ability to regenerate. All right, animals are mobile at some point. So at some point in their lives, they have moved. A sponge is an animal, but as an adult, it is what we refer to as sessile, meaning that it does not move. A sea anemone is an animal, but it does not move. But at some point, it did. So in the larval stage or the planktonic larval stage, when they're little bitty, little tiny sea anemones or sponges, they actually were moving through the water before they settled down and before they did not move anymore. An animal is also characterized by the ability uh, or the, by the characteristic being heterotrophic. All right, and remember that heterotrophic means that they have to consume other organisms for energy. Uh, they cannot make their own food for energy. So they cannot photosynthesize, they cannot chemosynthesize, they have to consume other organisms for food. All right, real quickly, an overview of our animal body systems. And I know that this is going to be a lot of information. Just jot it down real quickly as we kind of go through. Pause it after I finish talking about the slide and then copy that information down. All right, so our skeletal system is just referring to your bones and your joints. Your nervous system is your brain, your spinal cord, those sensory organs. Your muscular system uh, has all of your different muscles. Uh, your cardiovascular system is comp uh, composed of your heart, your arteries, your veins, your capillaries, all these different blood vessels. The respiratory system uh, is allowing for gas exchange through either lungs or gills. Remember that we're talking about marine organisms. So they may have lungs and they may have gills. All right, uh, your digestive system converting that food. Remember that organisms are heterotrophic. So taking that food, converting it to energy, having those nutrients absorbed through uh, the digestive system. Your urinary system, removing waste, excreting urine. We talked about this just a little bit when we talked about osmosis and organisms in marine environments and having to maintain that homeostatic balance. So having to regulate the amount of water inside of their body with being in a saltier external environment. All right, so they're releasing very little urine. All right, so the reproductive system is creating and transporting those gametes. We talked about that a little bit with our coral spawn lab and the idea of broadcast spawning. Um, and then the intergummatary system uh, would just be your skin and your hair. All right, let's try to get this to click. There we go. All right, so there are two different ways to classify these animals. And this is how we're breaking up this animal kingdom unit. So we're starting first with our invertebrates because these account for 97% of all animal species on Earth. That is a huge amount of animals. So if you're thinking about it, 3% of animals on Earth have a backbone. All right, so that includes humans, cats, dogs, whales, sharks. Okay, so all of these would be considered vertebrates accounting for that 3%. But 97% of all animal species on Earth are invertebrates, meaning that they do not have a backbone. They do not have a vertebral column. A lot of invertebrates are characterized by having what is referred to as an exoskeleton. So this is that hard covering of the body that allows for muscle attachment. Say, for example, this particular crab. All right, so this crab has an exoskeleton. And the way I like to think about it is if it goes crunch when you step on it, it most likely has an exoskeleton. 
all right? These vertebrates, that 3%, are organisms that have that vertebral column. They have that backbone to them. For example, the whale in the picture shown, all right? These particular organisms have what is referred to as an endoskeleton. And an endoskeleton is just that internal skeleton that's supporting and protecting all of those organs inside of the body. All right, when we start talking about characteristics of organisms in regards to temperature regulation, we're looking at two different types of body temperature regulation. So we've got endothermic animals and we've got exothermic animals. So think of endothermic reactions and exothermic reactions that you heard about in chemistry. All right, so endothermic means that the body functions best at a certain temperature. So these animals will either move or seek cover in order to maintain that temperature. For example, a human. All right, if it's cold outside, we're going to run inside or we're going to put a jacket on, all right, because our body functions best at a certain temperature. An exothermic organism has a body temperature that can actually fluctuate within a particular range. So this environment that the animal is in is usually equal to its body temperature within a few degrees, all right? So these would be things, uh, what we refer to organisms being cold-blooded, okay? So things like my turtles have to have a heat lamp in order to stay warm. Lizard snakes can be seen sunning themselves um, out when it's, it's a little bit colder in order to maintain that internal body temperature. So these are exothermic organisms. So think exothermic would be what we refer to as cold-blooded organisms, and then endothermic organisms would be what we refer to as warm-blooded organisms. All right. When we start to classify our organisms, and notice in your chart that you copied down on page 47, that it had a column asking for body symmetry. And I'm gonna do another short video later on that kind of shows you different types of organisms and the types of body symmetry that they have. So asymmetry means that an organism is irregular in shape. So most of the animals that are asymmetrical are actually stationary. So when you think of this, I want you to think of a sea sponge, not SpongeBob, because SpongeBob's not real, he is a, square car sponge basically that lives in the ocean but a true sea sponge and i've put the picture of that down at the bottom under the word asymmetrical so these sea sponges cannot be divided in any type of true symmetry um, when we are talking about them they are referred to as asymmetrical meaning that they do not have a particular type of symmetry they are regular in shape all right the next organism in the center is actually a sea anemone so this is what nemo lives in and it, this particular organism has what is referred to as radial symmetry so think radial think radius like a circle all right so these bodies can actually be divided into equal halves through a central axis think radial think pizza so you can divide a pizza into individual pieces that are all symmetrical from a center point so if you look at this particular sea anemone you see if we were looking straight down at it it would look like a circle and we could divide it out with that radial symmetry from the central axis. Same thing would go for a starfish. A starfish has pentaradial symmetry, meaning that it can be divided into five part symmetrical pieces. Another organism would be a jellyfish. If you're looking down at the top of it, you can divide it out from that central axis. All right, and the very last one is probably the easiest to understand. Bilateral symmetry just means equal two part symmetry. So a human, if you're looking at me, and of course my hair does not make this symmetrical, but if you are looking straight down, I've got an eye on each side, an eyebrow on each side, an ear on each side, and then my mouth is completely divided in half with a nostril on each side, an arm, an arm, and a leg, and a leg. All right, so that bilateral symmetry applies for organisms that are much more complex, things like lobsters, humans, sharks, fish. All right, so all of these have bilateral symmetry. All right, so here's an example of our bilateral symmetry with a lobster, dividing it halfway down. We've got a chelipet on each side, a claw on each side. We've got four legs on each side, and then we've got a tail that is actually split directly in half as well. All right, for this very last part, I am going to ask that you draw either a lizard or a fish or some type of organism on your paper to represent all these different terms. And you don't actually have to copy down what is written on here if you're drawing this particular organism. Okay, so when we are talking about our four anatomical terms, and when I start the dissections, I'm going to use these. I'm going to say the anterior region, and the anterior region is referring to the head portion. The posterior region would be referring to the behind or the tail, all right? So this posterior region is the back end of an organism, and most likely is the tail of a particular uh, marine specimen. All right, the dorsal side would be the back side. So think the dorsal fin and jaws, that da dun da dun is the dorsal fin, that's that back side of the organism. 
and the ventral side would be the underbelly, all right? So ventral belly surface, dorsal back, posterior back part, so towards the tail end, and then the anterior is towards the head. All right, make sure that you've gotten all of these notes down. I am going to film a video a little bit later um, that shows you some sample organisms when I can get back into the classroom and show you what those organisms actually look like and what types of symmetry they have.